thing to the fans is this, and it's not about my job. My, my thing is about these players playing well and playing to the utmost of their ability and me trying our best as a staff to help them. You guys can take the narrative that you want to take. Our focus is on Boston College, period. That's it. The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks. What's up, what's up? Welcome into the Orange Zone. It's Halloween week here in Central New York and the rest of the world. I'm Tommy Sladek, Samantha Crossan. She's got the Ask Me About My Podcast t-shirt. Remember, this is the award-winning Orange Zone podcast. You can find every episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you want to listen. You can also find every episode on our Orange Zone YouTube page. We invite you to like, comment, subscribe, share, do it all, and be sure to follow us on our all-new Instagram and TikTok page for more Orange Zone content. We love the fans we love you all we love the listeners now james will be in a little bit but we have a very special guest this was a last minute booking sam i mean i'm surprised that we were even able to get him in i thought that it might be just too tough with mm -hmm. the amount of time but i'm really appreciative and grateful of the fact that he felt like this was important enough so thanks for being on the show first timer first timer if you're watching on youtube you will see who our guest is it's it's football, and it's football from the Syracuse-Virginia Tech game down there in Blacksburg. He ended up making the trip up to the studio. And uh, football, how, how's it going, man? How's the experience? Well, first off, I'd like to thank you for having me here. I, uh, I took uh, about 90% uh, of the snaps there, so uh, I saw it firsthand. Football, I know you don't have much time here, but we need to ask you one of the most important questions. You were moving down the field with Virginia Tech with Syracuse football, whether it was running or passing, the connection from one hand to the receiver's hands, moving down the field. Why were you not moving down the field? Well, I'll tell you this right now, okay? Then I, I told you straight to this off the bat. Uh, them boys were ready. Them boys were ready, and uh, we threw that ball around a little bit, and we <sighs> – every time he tried to run that ball, I tell him <laughs> to throw the ball. Every time he ran the ball, I told him to throw the ball. I mean, back and forth, we were going back and I had back and forth. And uh, finally, I said to him, damn it, just, uh, just, just run the ball. Just run the ball. Just run the ball. And then uh, he threw the ball. He threw the ball. But uh, I tell you, that it was hard talking to Schrader, and we, uh, we had our battles back and forth. Uh, but, um, you know, he, one thing he did do that was, was good of me, he didn't put the ball in the other hand for the other team. You know, uh, he didn't throw me in the air. I mean, his percentage was down a little bit. Uh, turned it down a lot, but, uh, you know, we, we fought through it. We fought through it, but um, I'll tell you one thing. I became, became really good friends with, with the punter. The punter. <laughs> the, that punter was a hell of a punter, though. He punted me seven times, I think. <laughs> you know, I, I ended up getting his, uh, his uh, Facebook information after the game. You know, I, uh, after that game, they took me to the, the football rehab to get stitched up. I had the opportunity to, <laughs> during the hospital days, was staying there a couple of days on Sunday. I had the opportunity to see Daniel De DeVito play, too, as well. I couldn't believe it. Daniel DeVito. Daniel DeVito. I was, Tommy I thought, DeVito? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tommy DeVito. That's his name. Yeah, Tommy DeVito. He was playing that game very good against the Giants. They brought him in there. And, again, I thought I was going to see some passes. I didn't see no passes. All screen plays back and forth. They didn't trust the young man. I don't know what's going on with quarterbacks at Syracuse University. But all I know is they need to get a quarterback there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get ready for this Friday night game. And Mr. Football, I appreciate so much the fact that you brought all this emotion. Um, is there time for one more question? Well, well sure. Yeah, you sure, you sure can. I, I was just wondering, you know, start to finish already, you mentioned the atmosphere, the music, the environment. Um, what were some of the emotions that you were feeling throughout the course of that game? Well, I was sweating the whole damn time. I was sweating. I was, I mean, the, 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 the pigskin on me, it was, it was a different color. It was a little bit green on me, but uh, I got all cleaned up. But the whole atmosphere was unbelievable. And I, I tried to warn them boys, but them boys went in there, thought they had it all done, had it all figured out, and they had a bye week and everything else. Coach Baber said that they had a bye week. They had the best practice last week, but uh, I just don't know what just happened to them. I just don't know. Well, football, appreciate the honesty, man. Always, you're welcome back anytime. I make sure, uh, thank you so much. And, and make sure you follow this guy on social media at football, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Great, great follow, knowledgeable of the game, and, and he stays busy, man. Thank you very much for having me there. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, welcome back in. We got the full crew. We had a guest here before you. I'm not sure if you recognize the uh, voice or anything. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no. it was the football from the Virginia Tech series. Yeah, the football. Game. Yeah, he came in. Great interview. Good okay, guy. Okay, Good guy, okay, man. Yeah. He said to say hi, by the okay, way. Okay, appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. Okay, then. Good yeah. Job. Thanks, yes. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yes. You know, it's it's the Halloween week. 
We like to have some fun, yeah. but we got the full crew back. We have Samantha Cross, and we have James Munger, Super Bowl champion for the SU, best running backs of all time. And we have uh, Brendan Hodges, and right now we are filming on Halloween. If you want to get a shot on Hodges, Hodges just went straight football mode, straight high school, high mode. school football self. <laughs> what do you like got for us? He's actually spooky. I got the high school jersey. You can't really see it with the frame we got here. I'll bring myself up full later on when we do trivia. But I got the old high school jersey. Yeah. Thank God it stretches. Uh, <laughs> so it still fits. And then I just went with the eye black, and it was like, you know what? Let me let me go full backup quarterback who wants to uh, show off and not so play it all vibe. So it must be a very clean jersey then. No, it, it well, it was cleaned mm. after I was done. It wasn't clean when I played in it. If that's what you're asking. That was an oh. attempted insult. Yeah. I caught that. Yeah. Sam is Sam is a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, you know what, I didn't actually have a costume, but I do feel like when I think about Halloween, the colors with that would be black and orange, Right. and I just happen to have a shirt, just just give you the full, that literally says, ask me about my podcast, really, uh-huh. really wicked cool <laughs> gift, honestly, so yeah. I thought the right time to wear that was now to promote the podcast. I love that, that's yeah. perfect. Just want to hype it up. I'm, I'm in costume too as well. Yeah, so am I. Sad Syracuse fan. Sad Syracuse fan. <laughs> Um, I am a, I'm the floor of a nineties bowling alley. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Right. So we all, and really I don't know what the reference is to Syracuse sports, but just, that's, that's just what I had going on. I looked around and I was like, what could I pull off? And there we go. Right. I'm an object. There's been a I joke going around <laughs> that people, someone should have dressed up as a W. Oh, okay. Is that, is that your joke? N- no, it was, uh, it was another person's joke. Actually. Let them keep that joke. One cause we that. need, cause we need, cause this team needs one. No, I do get that. I do get it now. One. Yeah. Oh, scared of getting mm. one. I actually, that's very creative. I like that. Brandon, that was good. I'll give that to you. Cause at first, I can't I, take I any credit I for it. Click him when he said W I'm like W but it's so long ago since we had a W. It's been a long a time. It's been September folks. <laughs> it's been the second to last week of September. Mm. We are now, by the time you're listening to this, it will be November, and there has not been a win since September 23rd. So, give you the full gist of what we're getting into today. Boston College coming to Syracuse on Friday, a short week of sorts. This is a team in which Syracuse is finally favored again. The back half of this schedule here is about just as easy as it can get on paper. But given the way that Syracuse is playing, there is no guaranteed win in any of the weeks if at all, with how things are going right now, because things are bad. They lost to Virginia Tech 38-10 to and marked the third straight blowout loss, fourth straight loss. But again, I don't group the Clemson game in there because they scored 14 points. But oh boy, another game with just one touchdown. Now that you guys have had not just, normally it's two, three days of marinade. You guys have had five. What's the feeling right now with Syracuse? And guess what? We're also going to be getting into how many wins we think is going to impact, ultimately, the coaching future of this team. I think that should be you, Samantha, because did you interview the team? Yeah, I mean, listen, I interviewed the, the players today, and if you're wondering kind of what's on their mind, one of the big questions that was brought up, just to dive right into it, is accountability. And I think everybody knows that now is the time where we're really discussing all of that and whether or not Dino's on the hot seat and what his future will be like with this team and where we go from here. And one thing that they all did say that I wanted to point out was that not only – Did they say that Dino always does take accountability and right after the game, he'd be the first person to say, this is on me. But there were also some players, particularly Dan Valari, who said, I don't even agree with Dino when he says that. I think that it's on us. And I think that we have to play better because I really like playing for these coaches. And I feel like not everybody is always giving it their 100%. So really, again, with this team, one thing that has stayed consistent and true throughout is there's really never a lack of accountability. And they do all still feel together and they're doing their best to keep a positive mindset and outlook. But they also admit that that gets harder, that the more weeks go on, that that you have losses. And I guess for me, as far as what's my state, the, the biggest thing that pops out and stands out to me is that the Virginia Tech loss felt different. It felt different from the, you know, like there's a difference between, listen, there was three straight losses, but two of them were two really good teams, and one of them was semi-competitive. But the Virginia Tech loss, to me, is in its own separate category of you had a bye week, and there was the chance to heal, and there were all these promises, really none of which were delivered upon. I I felt like it was pretty much the worst that it could get. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. Um, Just watching the game, they don't look look good at all. And... um, uh, you know, even looking for the coaches on the sidelines, just you don't see the coaches, you know, jumping around and stuff like that normally. And they look very deflated. 
like how my voice sounds very deflated and uh I don't know what Mr. Football said but um you know eight sacks I mean you probably you could probably pressure on Schrader but it's the whole team it's just the whole team even with, including the coaches I think the only positive thing we have is uh, uh Rocky Long I mean that's that's where we're at right now I think and I like the defense end of the day. Same. I think they, I think they're they're doing their job, but it's just you're you're going to get worn down after after the game goes on when you're really not getting too many breaks. But ultimately, you you made a mention of the players very much coming to the defense of this coaching staff, saying they are taking accountability. Babers said in his press conference on Monday. Ultimately, he's like to, to pass a ball, everything has to work. It's, it takes all 11 guys out there. It takes all the coaching staff. But again, it's one of those where while we're getting a little bit more into the weeds and talking about the accountability, some of the rhetoric is getting old because it's been week after week yeah, after exactly. week at this point and stuff isn't changing. So how does anything change on November 3rd? And granted, I think this is – you know, it's it's a Boston College team that's won four straight. Their schedule not that strong, but it's a question of do you guys see things changing? And how much this is a question I had for Mungro because this came up a couple of times today during player availability is Tuesday. What wait, Tuesday. I said I said today. I said today. Sorry folks. <laughs> um on Tuesday, this came up at player availability, which was to your point. Week in and week out, at this point, two-thirds of the way through the season, how much can things really change? Are, it, are it they can. small adjustments? It, are they big adjustments? Like, what can you really fix in, in one week's period? I hate to say it to the fans, but there's not really much you can fix. You can't really fix it. I mean, the, the fixing problem is during the summertime. The reward is the game. Now you're in the middle of the season at the back end of the half, these, you know, the back end of the season. Things are not going to change. And, you know, my predictions now it will be different, unfortunately, because I have not seen them change at all. Um, again, you, you just had a bye week. You should be fresh, and ready to go, you know, high energy. I mean, they didn't look, they didn't look good. They didn't, I mean, they went out there and they, they punted the ball, you know, four times in a row, you know, three, four times in a row. And that's – you can't win games like that. And the quarterback has a rating of 11 or 12 or 13 or whatever. You cannot win. You can't win. I mean – Offensive linemen are not, are not playing well. Um, the poor defense out there, you know, like you said, I mean, you can only be out there so long. And, you know, when you're putting the ball four, uh, three and out, your def defense is going back on there. You're not giving them no rest at all. So, yes, I do give credit to the defense. They're playing hard. Offense, I give them their grade F. I mean, for the past few weeks, it's just been terrible. The coaches, you know, need to change something. But, again, you can't make big changes because the system is already in. The plays are all in. Now it's just about just executing, and the players are not being able to execute the plays. One thing that I think has been on everyone's minds ever since that Virginia Tech game is thinking about this team more broadly and the future of this team. What does it hold? A big part of that is Dino Baber's fate and future with the program. And I think a big question on everyone's mind that has been brought to the forefront in the past week is should he keep his contract and what would it take to see Dino Babers in the same position next year? What do you have to see in the end of this year? Uh, you know, even, even if they win the, win the, win the next games, um, I think there needs to be a change. There just needs to be a change at, at the top. And, you know, it's, it's hard to do that with a team, but uh, I think this is the proper time. I mean, he's been there for a long time. Um, and it's the same song and dance every single week. Uh, you know, you, you win your first few games, and then after that, it just goes downhill. So why, you know, I, I, as a coach, I would focus on why is things going downhill in the middle of the season time after time. Um, you're not going to be able to fix it, like I said, in the you know, next, uh, next few weeks. But that's something he has to really figure out, him and his staff, because it, it's, it's the same thing. And you don't see that from a lot of different programs, but for some reason you see it at Syracuse year after year. Um, there's a lot of good coaches out there, a lot of good players out there. Uh, I mean, as you see, you see Syracuse players going in the, in, in, uh, in the NFL and they're, you know, having really good seasons. So th there's players here. It's just how do you get your players to believe in what you're saying? Yes, I do believe Dino had the kids believing, but believing into the system and everything. But as of right now, I don't think the kids really believe in the system. I just don't believe that. Um, because, in the, and if the kids don't believe in it, then that's when the coach has to, uh, 
um, make adjustments around your players, not the players making adjustments around the coach. That's for the coaches to do. Um, and we're not seeing those type of adjustments on offense at all. I mean, like, again, I said, we live and die by the quarterback. Uh, the quarterback has so many responsibilities, um, and there's too many responsibilities. But that's the way the offense was in the very beginning, and we saw that in all the beginning games with Schrader's running the ball and all that type of stuff, making, you know, nice runs, nice passes. But we knew that was going to stop when they got to Clemson. Like, all that running around and stuff like that, what he was doing, it's not a one-man's game. It's a team, a team sport. So you need all your players. And we're not getting it done. We're not getting done with the people we have. And I think uh, it boils down to quarterback play, not putting as much pressure on the quarterback, but that's the way they designed the offense, putting all the pressure on the quarterback. So if he has a bad game, we're going to lose, point blank. If he has a good, good game, we're going to be in it because we have a good enough defense. Um, so, you know, when you talk about Dino, I, I'm not a very happy, happy camper with the coaching staff at all, except for the defense. Um, we need to generate points. We need to score offense. And if that means bringing a new uh, offensive uh, coordinator in, uh, a new head coach, so be it. That's what we have to do. It's about the program, not about the individual. I'm going to take that and put it in two questions because there's the what I want and there's the – or what I would want to see, and there's also the what I think is going to happen, what I think is going to keep him here. At this point, I mean, if he's able to get this team to 8-4 and four, and they win out, bring Dino back. That's where, that's where I stand. Because to me, it's, it's showing that it's getting over that hump and moving forward with something. And, that, and there's a few things that go into that answer. 7-5 and five, and maybe a bowl win, I might still be there, but anything below that and it's and it's done what i think is going to happen is i i think if this team gets to a bowl game if they are eight and four or seven and five he is 100 percent coming back six and six that's an interesting question anything below that if it stays four or if it goes five i think it's done and the difficult part of our jobs with this is with syracuse being a private institution we don't know the fine details of how much he's making there's been reports in the past or really when he is leaving you know there was a a graphic that the team put out on social media not too long ago that was quickly taken down that had the 2024 on there so we based on those things you like to think that it is coming up on a contract year so this is a vital and important piece but the money plays a very big role in this and it also begs the question of can we see someone do it better? Because right now, just with the way things are in Power 5 and the ACC geographically, Syracuse is just at a disadvantage. NIL is not competitive with the top of the ACC right now. And if that's not changing, can we see anyone else come in and do it better? It's a bigger question. Well, I mean, there's some coaches out there. I know Dan Mullen is familiar with Syracuse football. He was a GA here. You know, that Does Syracuse have the money to bring in a name like well, that, though? Well, Syracuse has the money to build a, uh, build a whole brand-new athletic facility. So, you know, when you – Donor money. Donor, donor money, yeah. yeah. So, donors have money. Um, so, you know, when you say that, too, as well, you know, look at the big picture, when they're building a multi-million dollar complex up there just for football um, – that's a, something new that's happening. <coughs> Excuse me. That's something new that's happening. And normally when something new like that happens, normally you see somebody new come into as well. You don't want the same old face as something brand new. Let me ask you guys this. And I even also would want to hear. The coaches know that too as well. The coaches are not naive. The coaches know that. They're not naive. I also want to hear what even Brendan Hodges would say on this as well. If they were to bring in someone new, do you have a couple of names to throw out there of who you would want that person to be besides who you already mentioned? I mean, there's, there's coaches out there. There's going to be coaching changes at, at, you know, at the end, end of the day, at the end of the year. Um, the market is very important. Yeah. Depending on what this looks like in this offseason. I think that plays a very much bigger role than people realize is what is out there. Because you have some of the bigger names that have already been kind of chilling. Coach O 
LSU being one yeah. of them. Yeah. You know, he he's had his his history, <coughs> so to speak, with Syracuse. Um, and you know, he's he's living the dream with his buyout money. You feel me? So it's like if he's coaching. But past that, I don't think I can give you an answer right now because I think I would want to really see um, who else becomes available this offseason again. Yeah, this ain't a new face, a new, a new, you know, just a new face. I mean, and sometimes that's that's good for a team, you know, with the coaches and stuff like that. And, and when I say that, like, you know, you, you got to feel bad for like the assistant coaches. Like Dino will be taken care of because he, you know, he has a high salary. But you know, the assistant coaches got to move their whole family. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So. You don't think that it's on their mind too, as well, because oh, of course, you know is, they right. have families, and you know, it, and, you know, coaching is a tough business. It's either you're in it or you're not. And when I say you're in it, you're in it for the coach, and not so much for your family. I mean, the whole, all of this is tough because again, you brought this up, but I really do think about this frequently. Like you, you mentioned, like just bringing in a new face, and even that on its own does matter and would provide some kind of a change. But just because it is a new face does not necessarily mean that it would be someone who could be doing a better job than Dino already has. Like, I do wonder with NIL and the recruiting here and the fact that we are in the Northeast and all of these other factors, I do wonder who else could do better. And I wonder what kind of resources that Syracuse has available to be able to bring somebody in. Listen, of course you hear success stories about that all the time. Deion Sanders, hello. Wish we could have somebody like him here. <laughs> That's who I want. But no, I mean, I, I, I do. I think that it's a really tough situation. And you also are talking about, again, then a fan base that has to be patient really either one way or another. Because I, I feel like sometimes people don't realize truly how impressive at it, it is that someone like Deion Sanders was able to turn around a program like that in just one year's time. That's not something that you normally see happen. And I just feel like I even know that just from being on teams and having three different head coaches in the span of four years. Like when there's a new coach who comes in most often and most frequently they're bringing in some of their own new assistant coaches. You're talking about a completely new culture and then having to make all of the players buy in right. to yes. you when they mm -hmm. didn't know you before. And that's, that's a tough thing too. Like you're saying, you know, they're buying in and bringing a new coach and stuff like that. Um, but it, it, it's, you know, it, it's sad, you know, it's easy. So I'll just get rid of the guy. But, you know, I, I do have a heart of thinking of, like, the other coaches and stuff like that because at one time I wanted to coach. And that's the difficulties of coaching because you don't know what could happen. And luckily Syracuse is a, is a university that keeps their coaches around. Um, you know, some coaches, some of, some of the university's establishments, you know, fire the coach with three losses or four losses. And we don't do that here. And I think that's good. But, again, you bring a new coach in, so that now, now we're rebuilding again. You know, we were rebuilding for the past four years, five years, got D Babers guys, and now we're back to square root one again, um, rebuilding. And so now the fans have to be uh, more patient all over again for the next few years. Um, so it, it's, it's a tough situation, but should there be a new face up there? I think it's time. And I definitely think a new face could be a good thing. It just has to be the right face. Yes. And we're not going to know that until – <laughs> Obviously, they start playing. The question is, too, what, what's the expectation? What's the fan base's expectations? Because right now, if if what you want is is a, is a great college football program, it's not it. This yeah. isn't it right now. But what are your expectations? What are you expecting? Is seven and five or six and six is that is that success to you when looking at Syracuse football and? The answer from the fan base right now is no. But I'd like to hear from the fan base. Comment on that on the YouTube page because we're all curious mm -hmm. to hear what would be your expectation, but also like what would make you feel happy as year a fan? In and year out. Yeah, year because in and year just because you go to bowl game, like you know, you say right now they can you know uh, be seven and five or whatever and go to a bowl game. That's I'm not happy with that. I mean, everything is so big on let's go to bowl game, let's go to bowl game. Bowl game is just another game. If you're not playing in the you know. Uh, in the national championship or the playoffs, I mean, you're just a regular, ga regular game after, after the season. And it's rewarding for the success that you had during the season. To me, you know, six, and six, you know, six wins is not successful. <laughs> and, and you're eligible to go to a bowl game. That's not successful. Seven is just one, more, one extra game. Um, and the fashion of how we're playing makes it even worse because we won all those games in the front end and haven't won a game since. Hodges, what's up, man? What are you thinking? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't know. It, it's 
I have been telling you guys this really all week. As we and I say all week, we only have a day of the week to really prepare for this after game. We had some more time because the game was on Thursday this past week. Um, in terms of just like what it it looked like, the game was an indictment on the coaching staff. The way it started, and I understand that like it's not your full on bye week because it's a Thursday game after the bye. But in any case, you should be a little show more urgency in your preparation then for that game and be even more prepared because it's a shorter turnaround than your average bye week. And there wasn't. It, it looked sloppy. It looked just – I'm pretty sure I turned it off after the first quarter because uh, the Bills game was on too and, like, I was flipping between the two. And but that's an accurate depiction of probably what happened. Exactly. Most of this fan base around here Exactly. Thursday and, night. look, and no one can blame I remember when, we, when you sat down, Tommy, with Dino. What was that? That was late August, early September? Yeah. And we were on here, you, me, and Sam. I don't know if Mungro was here with us, um, talking about Dino Babers is a good guy. Great guy. Yeah, on Monday, you were sitting in studio. I was producing our news show. And one of our anchors said, Tommy, let me preface this by saying everyone, like, people love Dino Babers as a person. His status as a coach is what people are questioning. And it's it's one of those things where, like, you need a good man to lead a program, but that good man also has to be at least a good coach. Mm-hmm. Not a decent coach. Doesn't have to be a great coach. Can't be a decent coach, but needs to be good. And history has told us, whether it was the COVID year where everything went against Syracuse, or last year, 6-0 and to 6-7-5, and the seven and, five, and then losing the bowl game. Or this year, where it's a 4-0 start, and then four straight losses. That's that's average. That's not good. And while I don't think firing Dino would solve anything short-term or long-term, it seems more and more likely that the pressure the university will be facing from fans who, let, let's be frank, universities could care less about what fans think. It, it, on the inside. On the outside, they'll do something, but on the inside, it's more of like a Okay, but we're the one paying the guy millions of dollars. And the dome is empty. Exactly. So you got to make a decision. Keep paying him and have an empty dome? What? They, I should reword that. They don't care what the media thinks. I don't, they care what the fan thinks. I think is the way I don't I'm know if to I'm going to comment on that, but I'll, I'll say this. I think there's a there's a, you look on paper and you see that he has a losing record over eight years, right? Yeah, that tells and you. And you enough. say to yourself, <laughs> "How has this happened?" Because rarely ever do you see that in the Power Five for something like that to go on this long. And it's I think a few things go in. You had that build up to 2018. That's an automatic buy of a few year breather. Yeah. 2019 comes disappointing. 2020 COVID year, truly a mess. New York had different rules. That that is, a, to me, it's just kind of like a. Let's jump ahead mm-hmm. to 2021. Coaching change. Coaching changes at the coordinator position. Devito to Schrader, five and seven, almost there. And then you have that six and zero oh start. You have sellouts. Two sellouts in a row last year. You come into this year, and, and, and Clemson, that game fills the upper deck. So you have these true moments of where it feels like the community is back in, and those moments, I think, have created the time in which we've had this eight-year journey. At the hey, end of the day. I'm sorry. I'm a winner. I always will be. I mean, you have a losing season for eight years. That tells enough. It's time to move on. I mean, either way you look at it, it's time to move on. Like, it's just, I mean, you know, recruiting-wise and all that type of stuff, like, it's just common sense. Why would I come to a university that has a losing record? Like, why would I do that? I mean, that's for people out there. I mean, the university has to ask themselves, well, why would kids come here time after time, you know, the coach is losing? You know, I'm going to go to a, a, a program that's winning. Why, why would I go to a program that's losing? I think money's coming number one, too. I think I think if if, if – if you're getting offered a lot of money and it's a losing program, great. But there's nothing right now that shows me that Syracuse can be that school that dissuades someone because of the money and not having them go I'm to another program. I'm not even going for the money, though. Like, I why, know, but, 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 that's, but that is, I think, a vital thing moving yeah, forward. Because it yeah. it's the, you know, it was an interesting conversation about, um, uh, <laughs> that's a funny tone. Uh, 
it's an interesting conversation, right, of Syracuse's investment in the facilities. And if you're a player, if your school has old, outdated facilities, but they're offering you 25000 more to come each season, are you not even caring about that? Or do you go to a university that has pretty much, you know, all universities have very nice facilities already, D1, um, and also go to that university with a winning record and also get 25000 Exactly. Or get 20, okay, go 20000 Right. A little less, but you have nicer facilities and a winning program. I see what what you're saying. It's like I'm not going for the money, like I'm going to win. Right. And and listen. When it makes you the money. Yes. And and again, I think I think that depends. I think it depends. I, I do. A, James is a different breed here, keep in mind. Like, this is what 20 years now since you played college five thousand dollar different is is I think I would go with the better facilities, yeah. And if there's a better I outside mean, for just, more NIL for, deals. I mean just it's common sense. Okay, I just took my son to university, went to Seton Hall in Stony Brook. Uh-huh. Which one has better facilities? My son Seen, uh, Stony Brook has better facilities than Seton Hall, so therefore, the number one list on is Stony Brook than Seton Hall. I mean, it's just like Go Sea Wolf. Like I'm just, yeah. What was the Sea Wolf? <laughs> we'll talk about it another time. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, no. But I'm just serious. I mean, so it's like you know, you're gonna try to wine and dine these athletes or wine and dine anybody. If I'm be wine and dine, I want to be on the good team, on the winning team, not mm. on the losing team. Fair enough. Sam, your final thoughts on this? I I just, I see it from both sides. I do think that it's very appealing, some of these NIL deals, and kids are thinking about not only their future, but also their family sometimes, and what place did they come from, and what are their goals, what's important to them. But at the same time, I do feel like at the end of the day, a lot of these kids winning would be either their number one or their number two priority. They want to be at at a team where they can win and have those lasting memories. And like James said, I do think that when you go to a winning program, in some way you are investing in your long-term future because you're getting more looks and more people are seeing you and there are more eyes on your program. You have the opportunity to go further into the season. I think all of that actually does matter from a money standpoint as well. And and end of the day, what are they trying to do when they're in college? They're trying to have it as a jumping stone to the NFL. Absolutely right. All right. Hodges, what do you got for us, sir? Oh, do you want to pick? Uh, I know we haven't talked about this yet, but the game on Friday? Uh, oh, there's a game this Friday? Yeah, let's pick <laughs> it. Yeah, let's do it. So okay, okay. Do here, let me, let, we'll me, let, let, me, let me do my host thing. As you guys can Tommy. see, there was a priority. Yes. Um, uh, Syracuse taking on Boston College at the Dome Friday, returning home for the first time in the month. Syracuse, three-point favorite solely because they're playing at home. If Tommy wants to explain that, he can. Who are we taking? What's the spread? Tommy, go. Okay. Well, I've seen different spreads. I've seen Syracuse as a three-point favorite. Um, What else have you seen, just so I know? What do you mean? You said you've seen different Syracuse as a three-point favorite, and what else? Well, on the first day, I saw one site had – three-point favorite it might have been bet mgm had boston college as the three-point favorite That's so what it's I like thought I saw. a shift as big as that but okay. end of the day to me this is the pick them right syracuse is the favorite because they're home so really this is this is I'm going to go with as a group here. Whoever wins, that's kind of you know an update on your record against the spread, so to speak. Uh, but our, our our records are the most are what we're paying attention to the most here. And uh, I think we all took W's outside of James last week. Against the spread, I'm horrendous. Sam's doing a lot better with that. Um, but as for Boston College, as for this BC game. I can't tell we- you updated line that I just found two and a half in favor of Syracuse. Okay. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, like, again, like, I'll start out first. Go, Go for it. What's your pick? Boston College. I can't believe I have to say that. But What's your score? The... Twenty-one ten. Look at his face. <laughs> that was shockingly. <laughs> That's shockingly. It's, it's, sad, it's sad. I have to say, it like that. But I mean, Syracuse has improved. Nothing. They haven't improved. Like mm-hmm. you just. Why would I? I? I mean, I'm not a gambler at all. <laughs> but I would not put no money on Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how easy what the predictions were. They said about the last four games. <laughs> no. <laughs> how about you, Sam? I I'm also gonna pick Boston College. Mm-hmm. Kind of feel like I have to at this point. Um, I do think it's gonna be closer, and I do think being at home is going to matter. And I do think that Boston College is on the easier end of 
teams that they have faced. And sure. I think it's going to be an easier opponent than Virginia Tech. I think Virginia Tech was better than people thought they were going into this. I don't think people realize that Virginia Tech was kind of on a little bit of a heater. Like, they're actually having a pretty mm-hmm. good season. Um, but Boston College also has won four games straight. So I think that momentum has to be accounted for. Um, in my mind, this is a – this is a – 24-21 Boston College win. So you th- actually see there being multiple touchdowns from I do. Syracuse. I do, yes. And I again, I think they're they're at home. I think they're pissed off. I think at some point, especially in a game like Virginia Tech, where it really is that shock to the system, and it goes so far from what you planned and prepared for it to be, <clears throat> now all of a sudden this game is really the make or break. Like how do you want to remember this season and – that memory is defined by this game. So this is the make or break for the season, you're saying, Sam? I think every game from this point out is going to be a make or break in some way, right? So Whether they got to win the out then. They have to win out pretty much. I Honestly, I don't feel they have to win out as far as it depends. Win out for what to happen. For them to keep Dino, I think Dino is going to be on board as long as they get to the bowl game, quite honestly, just based on what I've seen. And I think that I would want Dino to stay on as long as they won the bowl game. I think that would at least warrant if that is, which again, we don't know for a fact that this is true, but if his contract is one more year, I'd say if he gets to the bowl game and wins, he earned it because he figured out a way to crawl out of a slump. Past that, I'm not sure. But I do think that every game does matter from here on out. Yeah, because if you get one more win or two more wins, even that difference, that's the difference between bowl eligible and not. Two or three, that's the difference between the way you view the team. If you win out, completely different story. So yeah, I do think every game matters from here on out. I really do. Old me would be riding with you and saying, I have faith that they're going to fix it, but they have embarrassed me one too many times to the point where I was not just riding them to win, but I was doing the, I think the offense figures it out. I've been doing that for three <laughs> weeks now. <laughs> and last week was the most embarrassing of them. Wait, but that's even how, though I had the them fact losing. that he's going against it, that's how I know that I'm going to be right. So yeah, well, exactly. Because you know what? I haven't seen this type of emotion from I, you, Tommy. I'm a cursed man. It just it is it is what <laughs> yeah, it's it bad is. Bad luck always. And so honestly, if if you're Syracuse, you're going to be happy. I'm hearing it because for the first time this season, I'm truly saying it's not just a until you prove me right. It's a until you prove me right. I'm not giving you anything more than ten points, even to Boston College. Twenty-one to ten felt that felt really good to me. Um, I'm going to go even and say twenty-four to ten. Twenty-four to ten. And that feels weird for me to say, but I'm angry. I'm angry because I had their backs last week. I had them losing, but I had them scoring. You know, I, I, last week, too, it didn't work. I, I felt really <laughs> confident when, when Samantha's like, yo, I talked to Dino during this bye week, and we got things figured out. So you're saying I, I, I remember very clearly looking at oh, it. I, know. I remember clearly looking at it. So you switched t- it so up. So you're telling me they were to figure this out in one week of a bye week and they had the whole summer? Well, the, no, the reason I'm laughing is because remember I made that whole pitch and then I was like, but on that note, I'm going to switch. Virginia <laughs> yeah. Tech's going to yeah. win. And Mugro's like, I'm changing my mind. Syracuse. <laughs> you talked me into it. I know I did. I, I did. Mean, I'm sorry about I, that, man. Maybe I got to go first from now yeah. on. I, I, I bleed orange. I bleed orange. I know. And it's just, it's tough to see your team week after week get embarrassed. And that's the only way you could say is completely, utterly embarrassing to watch Syracuse football. I cannot wait to watch Syracuse basketball. Speaking of. Well, we have producer Brendan's trivia first. Oh. Yeah. How we doing, Hodges? James, would you like to know what a seawolf, orange, and Halloween (laughs) have in common? (sighs) Costumes, my friend. Costumes. And in the spirit of Halloween, we're recording this on Tuesday, October 31st. Last night, big announcement from the ACC, Tommy. We were talking about it in your office on a... Monday, the future conference football schedule model for the ACC 17 teams. Mm -hmm. Who's going to the West Coast? Who's going to see that gosh darn ugly Stanford tree mascot? I think Syracuse is, right? Or is that coming here? He's coming here. He's coming here. (laughs) Anyway, we've learned Syracuse next year will play eight teams with animal mascots. Excluding bowl games, what was the last year that happened? 
Wow. Eight teams with animal mascots? Yes. Dude, that is impossible. <laughs> You're telling us to go through the record of every season? We have a time limit. Wait, the, the fact that Brendan even took the time <laughs> to go through and find that, though, like, how can you be mad at that? I can oh tell you gosh. it's within the last 10 years. That's ridiculous. <laughs> We're going to be here all day. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> That's just insane. Like, no, you just had to guess, man. Tommy, you just had to guess. 20, villain. I'm, I'm going 2014. Tommy, I would like you to right, know. 2016. Villain Brendan came out on Halloween. Yeah, I see. Deal with it. I, mean, I don't even know this is villain. This is just. This is just uh, criminal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Deal it with is. it. By the way, while James is thinking, I should let the audience know we posted our first Orange Zone overtime exclusively on YouTube. There we weekend. go. It is um, us talking about the new sports in the Olympics, including lacrosse and flag football. Okay. Go check it out. It's only like a three-minute watch. Very short, quick-hitting That's segments that we uh, like those. don't make the podcast, but we want to share them because they're interesting things, and uh, Sam's very happy that lacrosse is once again growing to the international stage. Fastest growing sport. Tommy Sladek, <laughs> James Mungro, both possibly confirmed to be coming out of retirement to play in Olympics in the 2028 year. Uh, I'll be coaching, maybe. I won't be playing. <laughs> I'll be playing. All right, James, You want to throw a year out there? Um, you know something? I'm going to let you go first. Girls first. She, she already, already did. 2014. I locked it I in. I said 2016. Oh. Locked it oh, in. Oh, goodness. Just, just throw a date out for Just give me a, a year. You want 2017? Right, James, no, James going to go with 2018. No, no. I don't want 2018. <laughs> <laughs> you said want, throw a year out. I know, now I, I hope it is 2018 so said, badly. Yeah. Go against me. Do it. You said uh, 2015. Okay. All right. 2014, 15, So 16. the teams that Syracuse played this year were the Ohio Bobcats. Albany Great Danes, Clemson Tigers, Virginia Tech Hokies. 2021. Yep. Boston College Eagles, Louisville Cardinals, North Carolina State, Wolfpack, and Pitt Panthers. Criminal. 2021. Oh, what, Criminal. I, Congrats, Brandon. You feel like, good what, about that one? I, I do. It's Halloween, man. Anything can happen. That was spooky. How long did it take you to come up with all that, though? All, uh, the, all that information. Well, I remember Tommy. I remember Tommy and I talked about this. So I'm doing like a news sports swing shift today, so I have to do two things it's at once. Tuesday. It, Stop saying today. Sorry, Tuesday. My bad. Um, it's a rule here in our uh, industry, people. Uh, Tuesday, I'm doing news and Someone's sports. Someone's listening Friday. They're going to be like, "Wait a minute." I, I understand, Tommy. Let me finish. Jeez. Um, at when I finished the news show, uh, or finished stacking it, minus what I had to finish up after. Um, I was like, oh, we were talking about the schedule yesterday. I, I wonder how many animal mascots they played. And I play next year, and I'm like, oh, there are eight. When was the last time that happened? Go to Sports Reference. Great website, by the way, for finding trivia questions. And went back to, like, year by year. I was like, oh, 2022, they played eight. But the Gophers were one in the bowl game. So let's, like, scratch that out because that would be too obvious. 2021, they played eight <coughs> and didn't go to a bowl game. So, hey. You got too much free time on your hands. Dude, right. that took me in five minutes. In conclusion. Five minutes. Talk to Sean about this. In conclusion, <laughs> we're going to have to get to Syracuse basketball another day. Yeah, it's yeah, going on too long. Yeah, we're out of here. Golly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for Good watching. Luck, Syracuse. Big topic. Let us know what you're thinking. We want to hear from you. And Let we'll be know. back next week. We'll find out what we're going to be talking about. Peace. See ya.